As it still includes the design of shared connections per the latest AISC code, but how do you actually design a shared connection? How do you enter the information? How do you check the results? How do you optimize your design? This is Javier Encinas, and we're going to review the user interface in the shared connection design module in ASIP Steel. Let's get started. This is a template for the shared connection design in ASIP Steel. It has two panes. The left pane is dedicated to the input, and the right pane is dedicated to the output. In the geometry tab, you enter the sizes, dimensions, and all the geometric information. At the top of the page, you specify the connection type, either a single angle, double angle, single plate, or a T connection. Please note that the user interface changes dynamically when you change the connection type. At the bottom of the page, in the support tab, you specify the support type, either a column flange, or column web, or a beam web. For this example, we use a column flange. Here you specify the size of the support from the AISC sections database. For example, we can specify a W14 by 53, just select, and that section has been transferred directly to the calculations. In the beam tab, you specify the size of the beam, also from the AISC sections database. Here is the beam gap, which is the distance between the end of the beam to the face of the support. The beam can be uh, coped at the top flange and also can be coped at the bottom flange. Depending on the connection type selected above, a connector uh, tab shows up here. In this case, it's an angle. In this tab, you enter the angle dimensions and if it's bolted or welded to the beam and the support. For example, in this case, it's going to be bolted to the support and it's going to be welded to the beam. Since the angle is bolted to the support, we need to specify the bolt edge distance in the horizontal and vertical directions. In the bolts tab, you enter the number of bolt rows. In this case, we, sp we are specifying three rows of bolts and the bolt spacing, three inches. In the well tab, you enter the well length at the top, this dimension, and also the well length at the bottom, this dimension. In the materials tab, you enter the material properties for the support, for the beam, and for the connector. In this case, it's an angle. If you click on the bolts tab, you specify the bolt diameter and the bolt material. In the weld tab, you specify the fillet weld leg size and also the electrode strength. In the loads tab, you can enter either a single set of pre-combined loads or a nominal set of load cases and let us combine them internally. The design method can be per AASD or LRFD. In any case, the required load is a vertical load P, which is the reaction of the beam. This is the shear that we are trying to resist with the connection. In the right pane, if we click on the at a glance tab. This is a summary of the results where we can see here the connection strength per limit state. Please note that in this case, we are designing per ASD, but we can also design per LRFD and this will change dynamically as well. At the right, we have the combined loads per load combination. And at the bottom, the design checks and also the geometric constraints check. In this case, this check is not passing. If we go to the Condense tab, this is a more detailed set of calculations grouped by topic, also by load combination. Here is the connection strength per limit state and also the program identifies the controlling limit state. In this case, is ball shear rupture at support. At the right, we have the combined loads, and also the program is identifying the controlling load combination. In both cases, the design is passing because the design ratio is 0.26. The design checks passing but the geometric constraint checks are not passing in three particular items. So this way we can immediately identify the problems and we can focus our attention on these issues. If we go to the detail tab, this is a much more detailed set of calculations, step by step, the combined loads. This is the connection strength with exposed formulas and also with references to the AISC code. So all the limit states are defined here and calculate it step by step. Here are the design checks, also 
with the references to the EISC code and at the bottom the geometric constraints. So we can see here the deficiency that we identified previously. And finally, in the graph tab, you see a front view, a side view, and a top view of the connection. Here is a summary of the design ratios. The connection strength ratio is 0.26. The design checks ratio is 0.83. All those are passing, but the geometric constraint checks are not passing in this case. As you can see, the user interface in the shear connection design module in ASIP still is very simple and efficient. The program is organized in tablet pages, so the information is located and organized in a very efficient way. With this, we conclude the review on the user interface of the shear connection design module in ASIP still. If you are interested in the software, please visit the website www.asipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.